Hello and welcome back to Down the Bench of the 50 watt Class A amplifiers uh, which we have been working on previously. Took a little break, worked on something else and today what I'm hoping to do is find four 807s that look about the same and are reasonably matched. They don't have to be perfectly matched but somewhere near. I'll get, in on, I'll get on to what is matched in a minute because that could mean anything. So what I've just done, I've soldered on four sense wires as it were. One yellow, one sky blue, one dark blue, one pink. Each valve already has a sense wire going to this board here, which I don't know if I've mentioned in previous videos, is a protection circuit. So what happens is, if the we get a thermal runaway on a valve that exceeds its a preset current value, I can't remember exactly what I set it to, but you know something that is like obviously wrong, then there's a triac down here, a C106D triac, which is obviously turned on, and that goes back out to the power supply here trips a relay and the relay cuts the negative supply to the main cuts the negative supply to the main toroidal mains transformer in the power supply so what I want to do today is just find four valves that are reasonably matched so to do that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to centre these two balance controls here and they need to be centred and to do that, what I'm going to do, instead of powering it up and having all that high voltage floating about the place, I'm just going to connect a small bench power supply and then dial it in until each side is the same. I wanted to do it with these sense wires so that I can turn the amp the right way round and the heat from the 807s, it just makes it easier. So this is the bottom base plate and I think Frank mentioned in the last video that it needs some cooling. Well as you can see it has a 4 inch 100mm fan and this I uh, got this from a place that does fans for silent fans for com you know for PCs and computers I mean it's not got the, the um, really brilliant airflow but it does the job it's better than nothing and that and that plugs into there and that feeds um, sorry that gets its power from the main doodah there from the main umbilical in Right, well I've got a few there to choose from, one to six down there, and then we've got four in the uh, amplifier, and then that's the, you know, but you can't see it as per bloody usual. Glare in this room. Right, there we go. That one's measuring 378 divided by 100 is 37. Now then, this is supposed to be a Class A amplifier. And according to the data sheet, these should be reading more like 100 milliamps with the voltages that's on there. So that's something I need to look into anyway. Let's not piss about. Let's try and find four valves that are reasonably the same, so 38, sorry, 38, right, and that one's 4.2, right, 39, so pink and light blue, that was, wasn't it, because I like a fool I didn't know sorry pink and dark blue right pink and dark blue I 
Okay, that one, pink and dark blue, and yellow and sky blue. Right, in a memento. Right, I found four pairs. I found four pairs that should do the job. That look the same and that are the same sort of height and everything because I did have one that I was previous, previously using which is a Xyrex made in USSR which is exactly the same print as on this one but this one I don't think you'll be able to see it's a little bit shorter so yeah, only just a tad so that's that Right, let's get on to matching. What is what are match valves and does it matter? Does it matter a bit? We're gonna bung the scope on in a minute and the audio analyzer and we'll see if it matters. But matching when you a lot of guitarists buy matched quads, matched pairs or whatever, but very rarely have I seen on eBay any mention of what test conditions they were tested at or where they match to 5% 10% 15% 20% are they matched in terms of emission or emission and GM or both and the other thing is is that say if I we just tested those valves at quiescent current if we were to stop bunging a sine wave in and then test it again we would get different conditions and so it's impossible I think to match four valves or just two valves for every condition at every voltage etc so all you can do really is just try to match them at the same sort of quiescent current because, yeah, otherwise that ma madness lies, you know. Um, I think I had previously the most new valves I've ever had in me sort of possession at one time was about 20 807s that Joe sent over. Out of those 20 brand new old stock uh, 807s, I managed to get about four that were matched under really stringent conditions they're on an amplifier the other 807 amplifier that me makes sort of borrowing on one long term alone at the moment so yeah it's a, a bit of a can of worms so all you can do like i say is just match them so they look more or less the same and there you go but if you want really stringently stringently matched valves you're probably looking at testing a hundred valves or more just to find say eight for instance that are the same because i know with the el34 amplifiers monoblocks that i built where i had to find 12 matched el34s i had a hell of a job to match them and next we will find out does it matter Here we are a little time later. I've put the valves that I matched in inverted commas paired up. This meter here is reading the differential voltage between each cathode of each pair of 807s. This meter at the moment is just measuring noise. Um, across an 8 ohm dummy load as you can see it's jiggling about but there's a lot of stray AC about so I'm just waiting for it to settle down because I've not long turned it on so as you can see that's moving about and that seems to be or at least those two 807s there seem to be balanced so now I'm moving the leads over to the other pair I'm trying not to get about oh fuck it oh this is a nightmare this is right that's the other pair 
so as you can see the other pair isn't as well balanced but as you can also see it's moving about right so I'll nope going the wrong way as these are only oh Jesus Christ it's like cracking a safe as these are only one turn pots as you can see getting them to null is problematic so that's the DC quiescent bias but then if I was to move one probe from the front pair of 807s I move the probe to one of the 807s at the back so we're reading one of the we're reading the cathode current of one at the front and the cathode current of one at the back and as you can see it's out of balance so I'm going to move that back oh, well actually I'm going to move them both back to the pair at the back and as you can see this is the other thing that happens I, I've looked into this a lot so as you can see now the back pair of 807s are now out of balance and so if you're not careful you can go around in bloody circles it's a bit like uh, it's a bit like lofting a boat the plans you can go round and round and round and round hopefully getting them you know the it, uh, getting the drawings or in this case the balance of the amplifier in perfect balance between each output valve so it's a bit of a nightmare so we've looked at DC balance why don't we have a look at AC balance so now I've got the audio analyzer signal generator 1 kilohertz 1 volt the volume isn't turned up at the moment we're still reading DC there which you can see has already changed again so I'm just turning up the volume control until we've got 3 volts 3.8 volts RMS output click that onto there and now we're reading the AC across each pair or sorry the back pair of 807s so as you can see that's reasonably in balance this is where GM and all that shit comes into it right give me a moment this is the dodgy one to put on right this is the front pair of 807s so as you can see they're reasonably in balance so let's read the distortion at the moment we're reading 0.4% total harmonic distortion go back to AC level we've got to make sure that's still the same so now what I'm going to do is click this back onto DC <coughs> and then I'm going to knock one of the back pairs out of balance I'm going to so and on this is the front one so that's well out of balance still reading 3.8 percent rms and our total harmonic distortion hasn't really changed that much has it it was 0.4 percent so let's try and knock the all of them out of balance right this is still reading the front one so i'm not going to move the thing again <coughs> as you can still see it's reading 0.4% THD still reading the same output so it doesn't really seem to make a difference does it there's our AC going back to AC and even though I've really changed the DC conditions oh, let's go back right there's the DC conditions so basically what that meter is telling you is that one of the 
807s in the push ball pair is reading about 80 milliamps more cathode current but as you can see it hasn't really changed the output of the amplifier or the total harmonic distortion what about it all the frequencies say so let's try altering the frequency frequency 100 hertz as you can see we're still reading 3.8 percent that's good because we know we've got good frequency response we've still got a similar situation on the dc ac wise that's out of whack does it make any difference total harmonic distortion well a total harmonic distortion is still about the same so there you go i hope that just gives you a i'm going to turn the amplifier off because it's very hot in here and these have got no cooling on so as you can see balancing regarding a push ball output stage is it important you make up your own mind i've shown you the evidence yeah i don't know so what i'm going to do now anyway fed up and messing about with the amplifier testing it up the yin yang i'm going to go and put these in the front room give them a good soak test with the new output um with the new output valves in let it sort of bed in a little bit because valve operating conditions do change over time and then i've still got a few things to do like still got to move the voltage control to here from here and um, there's a few other little finishing touches to do as well sorting out the top caps so that they sort of match each side and everything and then i've also got to repaint the bell housing on the output transformers because as you can see well you can't see because somebody's moved it out of frame it's got scuffs and whatnot the paint i used is cheap crap so i need to redo those few other little bits and bobs as well like drawing a, a, a complete schematic for the power supply and everything i hope i've got copious notes but i doubt it so i'll probably have to go back and redraw it from scratch and lots of other fun stuff right well thanks for sticking through this we will at some point bung it all out on the lawn and crank it up to full whack that'll be the last video take care of yourselves Ta-da for now.